Two years ago, I would spend my life wishing the week away and living for the weekend, then spending my nights overthinking in bed. I decided I'd had enough. I didn't believe in self-help books, but I was in a position where I would take any help that I could get. Since then, I've read over 60 books on personal development, stoicism, habit building, self-esteem and more. In this short video, I'm going to reveal the two sentences that completely changed my outlook on life, stopped me overthinking and worrying and how they can do the same for you. First, let me paint a picture for you. It's 40 degrees outside and you're exhausted. You've been working all day and you're dying for a glass of water. You go into your cupboards and you pick out a glass, ready to fill it with fresh, ice cold water. Then, as you head to the fridge with your glass, your finger slips and the glass falls to the floor and smashes on the hard tiles. What now? Well, in this scenario, you have two options. You can drop to the floor and say, why always me? You could get into a hump and say, typical, and blame bad luck for hitting you when you're down once again. Or you could just pick up the glass shards and get a new one. These are the options we have every day on scales much smaller and much bigger than this, from stubbing your toe to hearing a rumour about you to losing your job. And the two options come down to this. If you can change it, change it. If you can't, accept it. You can't change the fact that you dropped the glass. It's in the past. But you can change the fact that there's glass shards all over the floor and that you're hot and thirsty. So why bother with anything else? Some people don't like this notion because it implies to them that they can't do anything to fix the world of the big issues that they care about, such as climate change, racism, or even their favorite football team sacking their manager. Sorry, I'm still a bit hurt about Frank. But that doesn't mean that you should just give up on topics you believe in. It just means that you can do all that's possible as an individual to make the world a better place. Whether that's improving the way you treat people, um, talking to your family about recycling or even campaigning if it's something that you feel really strongly about. But only with the knowledge that at the end of the day, you can't change the way people behave and think. It's completely beyond your control. And that's okay. There's a famous phrase that says, be the change you want to see in the world. And another famous phrase that says, I'm starting with the man in the mirror. They all mean the same thing, that you can only control what you do, not what others do. And ultimately, if you can change it, change it. If you can't, accept it. So how do we put this into practice? Next time you're overthinking something or worrying, think to yourself, what can I control and what can't I control? If, for example, you've heard that your job is a threat and that there's going to be redundancies, list in your head or on paper what you can control and what you can't control of the situation. For example, you can't control whether you're going to be made redundant. It's not your decision. So resisting it would cause more harm and stress than losing your job actually will. But what can you control? Well, you could be the best employee you could possibly be until that decision is made. You can put your head down, perform to the best of your abilities and even buy your boss a six pack if it's that type of workplace. Then if you do still end up being made redundant, you have peace of mind knowing that you did everything within your control to change it and you can accept a decision that you had no possible way to change. And if we go through life doing the best we can with the tools that fate has given us, then what do we have to be disappointed about? The Stoics who are followers of the Greek school of philosophy, Stoicism, believed in the analogy of a dog tied to a car. The dog has two options. It could either resist the car moving and get dragged along, or it could run alongside the car. That's how we should approach fate. There's so much in life that we can't control, but what use is resisting it? All it will ever cause is more anxiety and more disappointment. It won't change the result. So just take a deep breath, pick up the shards of broken glass, throw them away and get a new one. What other option do you have? So for years I put off making YouTube videos until I made it, until I've realized that life wasn't about destinations or results, but what you do every day. Since then, I've started making weekly videos on building discipline and an unbreakable mindset. As you can probably tell, I don't have any editing or filmmaking experience, and I know the quality of my videos aren't great at the moment, but I feel like the message is more important than how it's delivered, no matter how many views I get. Because for me, the fulfillment comes from actually sharing my message rather than the results I get from it. But don't worry, I'm still going to try and improve my skills in editing and filmmaking to try and make these better as time goes on. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. And if you took any value at all from this video, I'd really appreciate if you could like, I think it's down there, um, and also comment on what has helped you overcome overthinking and maybe we can start a discussion. 
If you're trying to improve your life or you just enjoy these videos, I'd really appreciate if you could subscribe and join the community. And I'll see you in the next one.